Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days, or today's first video. That's going to take us to Christmas Day. Day 10 is Christmas Day, 25th of uh, December. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and e Ensemble. They run to around a couple of weeks. Have a look at the CFSB2 for the next four weeks at the end of the video, as well as the Beijing Climate Centre for the next three months. So you're going to see what the very latest is. only just updated overnight what the very latest uh, from the Beijing Climate Centre is showing for December, for January, and also for February as well. So I'll get on, get on with that for you very shortly just to say that the christmas updates have stalled unfortunately uh so we got stuck about 10 days ago update number 15 um because i've been unwell but tonight i am going to bring you the 16th christmas update that'll be around seven o'clock tonight we're gonna do it and uh i say this is gonna go up to christmas anyway but um we'll have a christmas a specific update for you tonight um and that'll be this evening. So uh, st have a look at that uh, later on. Right, I'm going to begin, though, uh, with the Arctic and North Atlantic observed and forecast charts. So the black line here shows where we've been with the AO, the red lines at the end, where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. This is just an index that's reflecting the atm atmospheric state, not driving anything in its own terms, it just uh, tells us what the atmosphere is doing. So when the AO is positive, you've got low pressure up over the pole. You will typically keep uh, you will typically keep uh, the cold air bottled in over the pole with those areas of low pressure at this time of the year and strengthen the westerlies through the mid latitudes. Conversely, though, when the AO is negative, you tend to get high pressure. You tend to get blocking over the pole and blocking is a route to push cold air out the pole and down into the mid latitudes where we are right now with the AO is in positive territory but over the next week uh, again in the second half of December it looks like the AO is going to be trending negative and the GFS ensembles are keeping the Arctic Oscillation in negative territory going through towards um, the last week of the month so it looks like we're going to be seeing the blocking signal increasing to the north that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get cold though from that because it just depends where that cold air is pushed out where the blocking is sitting but it definitely looks like the AO is on the move and after being in a rather positive phase in the first half of December it looks like it's going into a more negative period. NAO is the same idea so again the black line shows where we've been with the NAO the red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the NAO to go just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric state this time looking in the North Atlantic so where the NAO is positive you'll have low pressure around the uh, around Iceland and high pressure around the Azores strengthening the zone of westerlies conversely though when the NAO goes negative you'll have high pressure or higher pressure towards Iceland and lower pressure towards the Azores. We're in a positive um, situation with the NEO at the moment. So we've got both the indexes positive, the AO and the NEO are positive at the moment. So it's hardly surprising we've seen a, a very westerly phase of weather. Uh, the NEO is going to be moving through the middle part of the month down towards neutral. I and mean, then generally, as we go into the second half of December, it looks like most of the GFS ensemble members are keeping the NEO around neutral to weakly negative. So um, it's an index, but this is um, an indication that having these two indexes moving in this way, uh, it's perhaps an indication that we could be starting to see signs of something a little bit colder uh, beginning to develop as we go into the latter stages of December. There are a few hints in the model output. I'm going to show you those in a moment. Something potentially a little bit colder as well. But it's a very complicated situation. And um, just because the indexes are on the move doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get anything particularly cold from this. But as I say, the AO and the NEO uh, look like they're both shifting as we go into the second half of December. At the very least, we can possibly expect some sort of change of the weather pattern, perhaps, as we run up towards, um, I would have thought, probably more likely beyond uh, the Christmas period. It could just be the first indication of some sort of pattern change on the way. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at Halifax today. So this is another suggested location for this section of the video. If you'd like to have your local town or city feature within this part of the video, then please let us know. Uh, either at comments at gazovers or you can email us at gazovers at gmail.com or you can ask us through our social media accounts. So we're always happy to feature your local town 
or city within this part of the video. So, red line is 30-year upper air temperature average for Halifax. And for the next few days, we're going to be average to a little bit below average. It's going to go milder in the second half of the week. And then we can run up towards the Christmas period and beyond. That's that period just there. And overall, the GFS ensembles are still keeping the temperatures up. So, we talked about this in the video yesterday. It looks as though the GFS ensembles, anyway, wants to have quite a protracted and prolonged spell of mild weather going into the second half of, or into the final week, 10 days, I suppose, of December. Now, this uh, would be something that doesn't generally go along with the idea of the AO and the NAO shifting into neutral to negative territory. But uh, nevertheless, that's what the uh, upper air temperatures are showing. It's a very complicated uh, scenario. I'm sure you'll have uh, worked that out by now, trying to decide what is going on. As well, we have these cold outlier members just here. And there are a few that are very cold, actually going through this Christmas period. They are very much a minority option, but clearly within the GFS ensembles, there is a minority possibility, minority option, that things could go very cold over and after Christmas. However, they are in very much in minority. Most of the GFS ensemble members are actually up here, which, of course, is in much milder, uh, a much milder situation. Precipitation-wise, a fair amount of dry weather for the next two or three days. Gets more unsettled later in the week. <coughs> Excuse me. And then going on into Christmas, uh, plenty of precipitation spikes coming through there. So it does look as though things will be turning a lot wetter as we run up to Christmas. Uh, now, I can't show you the anomalies today. They haven't updated, so I'll move straight on to the generic chart. This is how the GFS is looking for Wednesday. Low pressure starting to pile in from off the Atlantic on Wednesday, bringing quite a bit of rain with it through the second half of the week. Also, milder temperatures as winds shift into the south. Next weekend, looking very unsettled. This is Saturday. We've got one area of low pressure two hour east, and a deep one is out in the Atlantic. That's Sunday. The next low is rolling through. That will be bringing a lot of heavy rain in a week's time and then going up to christmas it's staying very unsettled this is christmas eve with a 970 millibar area of low pressure over the top of the country so i mean that looks like a bit of a deluge really for christmas eve lots of heavy rain associated with that christmas day through to boxing day we start to lose that area of low pressure and we um build a ridge in from the west that's been somewhat colder air as well so it does turn a bit colder actually on christmas day and into boxing day a lot of dry weather but maybe a few wintry showers in the far north of the country uh, beyond Christmas, this is Friday, 27th of December. Low pressure is beginning to move back in from off the Atlantic. And as we head towards the end of the uh, GFS run, which gets us to New Year's Eve today, 31st of December. It looks like we're having a go at turning things increasingly blocked here. We have got high pressure still down to our southwest, but we've also got heights rising up to the north as well. That's one of those charts that could be the precursor to a rather colder period, perhaps. But again, this is over two weeks away, so uh, it's a long way out. It's just perhaps a suggestion that the pattern could be changing a little bit after Christmas, which you would expect with the AO and the NEO shifting into uh, a different um, type setup. Uh, GM looks like that, so uh, again, very unsettled at the end of week and mile two as winds go into the south over the weekend. We keep these areas of low pressure churning in from off the Atlantic, so further bouts of rain over the weekend and up to Christmas as well, looking unsettled. That's Christmas Day, day 10, 25th of December, and yes, we're looking unsettled with low pressure in control. And not as cold, I don't think, as the GFS is showing. ECM, so again, we've got uh, mild, wet and windy weather coming up in the second half of this week. And then low pressure just continues to dominate over the weekend. So more low pressure piling in from off the Atlantic there in a week's time. So the 22nd of December, that will bring a deluge with it potentially. And moving up towards Christmas, the ECM takes those areas of road pressure away to the east and starts to turn wind into the north. So out of the big three for GFS, the GM and the ECM, I think the ECM do have is the coldest today. Uh, and we do pull down a proper northerly there for Christmas Eve. I'm um, not sure how much support that has within the ECM ensembles, but it is definitely turning things colder there for Christmas. That's how, we think, that's how things look at day 10, uh, Christmas Day. 
So a ridge of high pressure just building in off the Atlantic. But we're still cold. The wind is still in from the north and probably cold enough to produce windy showers in northern eastern parts of the country in particular. There's the upper air temperatures showing it's not desperately cold, but it's certainly pretty chilly, to say the least. And, uh, yeah, it will be a seasonably chilly feeling Christmas anyway. So it won't be much snow around, I wouldn't have thought, way from the northeast. But it will certainly be a seasonal Christmas and there'll be night frost and... Uh, that kind of thing. So a nice festive sort of feel uh, for Christmas with the ECM. I say, I'm not sure how much support it has, though. Uh, this is how the precipitation forecast is looking based on that ECM run from Tamecio.com. Wintry showers, really, in the west today. East air is getting the driest of the weather. Tomorrow, rain gathers in the southeast, and that could bring a real soaking to that southeast corner Monday through to Tuesday. That gets out of the way, and then we have a drier day on Wednesday before wet weather's piling in from the Atlantic later in the week. So that could turn to snow on the leading edge, but it is introducing milder southerly winds. And then into next weekend, just very unsettled. Look at this, another deluge there on the 20th of December. That's pushing northwards, taking heavy rain with it. Here comes the next mass of rain. This is 22nd of December, week's time, looking really wet there as well. That's focused particularly on England and Wales. And then after that, of course, we get things a little bit colder. So winds turn into the north, showers become wintry, especially across the northern parts of the country as we get to Christmas Eve. Yes, there's snow showers across northern Scotland. Otherwise, a lot of dry weather, but it will be chilly. And that's midnight Christmas Day. So we get a few snow showers in the far north the country, most places dry. And no doubt widespread frost to greet us on Christmas morning. That would be very seasonably chilly feeling Christmas morning. These are the options that are on the table within the ECM ensembles today at day 10, which is Christmas Day. Uh, so we have 22 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure over the top of the country. They're going to be unsettled, obviously very unsettled. Uh, well, the cold side of jet stream of those as well, so pretty chilly. 20 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure sort of more to the south, uh, including um, operational and the control run, by the way. So the operational run is the run we're just looking at. Uh, so rather unsettled still with those and quite cold. Again, we're on the cold side of the jet stream going to our south. There's a little bit of blocking up towards Greenland as well. And then nine that look a little bit milder. They've got low pressure more towards the northwest and they're bringing in a little bit more of a southwesty. So that's a milder option for uh, Christmas day. And um, then two weeks' time, easy options that we've got. So 22 members of the ECM ensembles actually have us under high pressure by uh, the 30th of December. So we head towards the new year under an area of high pressure. Jet streams up there, but will probably be cold from frost and fog. 17 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure to our west and to our east, and some high pressure up to the north. I think we're on the cold side of a jet stream with those, so they're pretty chilly moving up to new year. And then 12 just here with low Low pressure out to the northwest and bring in westerlies. Quite a lot of options on the table, I have to say, indicating a fair amount of uncertainty potentially after Christmas. And that is what you expect if we are going to get some sort of a shift in the pattern highlighted by the change in the AO and NAO state. Then you would expect as this begins to evolve itself in one output that we might start to... Um, see uncertainty creeping within the model output. So just have to wait and see where things are going after Christmas. CFSV2 looks like this. These are 500 millibar heights going down to weak peers. The first week peer will take us from the 14th to the 20th of December. The coming week is unsettled with low pressure up to the west of the northwest, bringing in those westerly winds. So it's going to be very unsettled, not overly warm either. Uh, week 2 is the 21st, 27th of December, covering Christmas. Still looking very unsettled, low pressures over top of the country. You notice there's a lot of high pressure up to the north. Uh, so we have got blocking, but not in a position really to push much cold air into that trough of low pressure. Week 3 is uh, taking us through the new year. This is 28th of December to the 3rd of January. Low pressure still out to the northwest. A little bit flatter with those westerlies. Um... That's a little bit drier there. And then week four shows, again, a bit of a pattern change. This is before to the 10th of January, where we then build up an area of high pressure over top of the country. Jet stream goes north. So technically, we're on the mild side of a jet stream. But under the high pressure, you'd expect frost and fog. Last thing I'm going to show you is uh, the Beijing Climate Centre. So these are 500 millibar heights, break down to monthly periods. 
Uh, so the first monthly period is going to take us uh, through... Um, Take us through December, I think. So uh, this is the 500 millibar height anomaly for December, perhaps. Uh, and it's showing an area of above average height sitting to the north of us. With below average heights to the west. Actually, I think that's right. I think that's showing the winter. That's December to February. So this has gone wrong, hasn't it? So we'll, uh, that's the anomaly for December for the winter anyway. It's got high pressure up to the north and it's got some low pressure uh, over the country. So it's almost a quite cold pattern for the winter. Now, this is January. This is definitely no two ways about it, January. This is quite interesting. It has high pressure again over Greenland within the normal latitudes. Low pressure is coming through the North Atlantic into the UK and uh, away in central parts of Europe as well. Jet stream is down there. So that looks like it could be a cold pattern setting up for January, actually. By the way, we changed the map on uh, these charts. So it's much easier to make us out now. We're just here uh, in uh, the right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it, just there. So much easier to make everyone out now. So that's really good that they've done that. But that looks like it could be quite a cold pattern, actually, uh, for January. i uh, say appreciable levels of high pressure sitting within the normal latitudes up here low pressure is down there with the jet stream as well so january looks very interesting with the beijing climate center that's february and uh, for february it's showing a high pressure sort of becoming centered over the west of europe so that's just a dry mild quiet type month jet streams going northwards of course there could be frost and fog in with that but it's nowhere near as interesting as uh as january that january does look as though it could be quite cold and wintry if that came off that kind of pattern that's the kind of pattern we look for for quite a cold wintry month and then this as i say it's the winter i was going to show you december but it's got to be wrong this is actually the 500 millibar height normally for winter uh 2019 2020 does have high pressure up to the north has some lower pressure over the UK and particularly over northern uh, parts of Europe. You, that's an anomaly for three months, of course. So uh, whilst January does have a lot of northern blocking, uh, it, we just see much less in February. So averaging it all out, the blocking signal is reduced for the winter overall. But... Um, I think quite an interesting update from the Beijing Climate Center today or, or this month. Uh, and it does highlight the fact that we may well be in for something rather colder in January. So the winter forecast and gas weather suggests cold sort of coming and going, never really locking in and sustaining uh, with sort of protracted mild periods in between. I think the Beijing climate centre is along those lines, actually. So um, I'm thinking a little bit a uh, little bit more confident about winter forecast after this update from the Beijing climate centre this month. But of course, all long range output, highly experimental and prone to chopping and changing. So it's just a snapshot. And, uh, I mean, it doesn't necessarily guarantee anything is going to be correct with the winter forecast. But um, sort of pattern that we was expecting for this winter, which is a little bit on off, some cold weather, uh, along with protracted periods of milder conditions too. Right, that's it for your uh, week to 10 day video update for today. Just to say, but in the new year, Gas Weather's Sunday Roundup will be returning. So, uh, first Sunday in January, not sure what day that is, but the first Sunday in January, the uh, Gas Weather's Sunday Roundup will be back. Uh, talking of being back, tonight we're going to be back with the 16th Christmas update. As I say, we haven't done a Christmas update for around 10 days because I've been so unwell, but I'm going to try and get a Christmas update done for you this evening. Right, that's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.